Hello fellow Magic Bunnies, my name's Gary Scott and welcome to the Magic Bunny Library and my book review today in the book chair. We travel back in time to 1993 and the release of a one-off publication based on the innovative card magic of Ernest Eric. This is By Forces Unseen, written by Stephen Minch. Although the penmanship of this book belongs to Stephen Minch, I'm dedicating this section with Stephen's blessing to the creator of everything you'll read, the late Ernest Eric. Born Ernest Ray Eric on the 19th of March 1960, he sadly passed away on the 27th of April 2013. He lived in Albuquerque, New Mexico. What he left behind was an indelible effect on the people that knew him and within the confines of his magic work were some of the finest sleight of hand feats ever performed with a deck of cards. Difficult to master but ultimately rewarding. Ernest was a diligent student and had what many Cardicians proclaimed to be as the best ever one-handed bottom palm. Magic influenced his life so much that his son has the initials SWE. Although not a professional magician and worked in a managerial role for a university press in Albuquerque, his peers still sought out the pure joy of watching him perform sleight of hand. Yet he rarely appeared at any kind of magic gathering. You can read more about Ernest Eric on the Bill Goodwin tribute site, where you can also see the only known video footage of Ernest Eric performing. Go to www.billgoodwinmagic.com forward slash Eric for more information. Inside the pages of By Forces Unseen, the work of Ernest Eric is clearly accessible thanks to the writing of Stephen Minch and the always high quality publishing of Hermetic Press. Although we are talking about Ernest Eric's material, it was Ray Cosby and Bill Goodwin that eventually persuaded Ernest to commit to a book under the writing of Stephen Minch. By Forces Unseen, released in 1993, was first conceived in 1987 when Bill Goodwin and Ray Cosby first told Stephen about Ernest and his ability. They tried to convince Stephen to publish his material. A few years later, the meeting of Stephen Minch and Ernest Eric took place in Seattle. There were a couple of days of going over potential material for the book, with Stephen working from notes and some audio tape, and the rest is history. By Forces Unseen is cover to cover card magic. It holds some of the most knuckle busting slides that will test you. Its format is simple and easy to learn from, with illustrations from Kelly Lyles that capture the action perfectly. A sleight of hand index that is attached to the rear of the book references the slights in each trick. A really neat way of quickly accessing the slights necessary to master the magic inside. With so much information in a condensed format, I'm going to accentuate a few chosen excerpts from the book. The rest is for you to discover. Let's go to the book chair and take a close up look 
by forces unseen. As we open the book, we see the title page, with credits for publishing and illustrations. There is also acknowledgement from writer Stephen Minch in regards to people such as Ken Krenzel, Darwin Ortiz and of course Ernest Eric. Then we see the contents page, which is divided into two parts, with 21 items divided over 205 pages. Directly after the contents, we come across Ernest Eric's only contribution in writing for the book, entitled Apologia, in which Ernest emphatically asks forgiveness for his fascination with sleight of hand rather than hardline presentations. Within the Apologia, we are treated to his first encounter with the professor, Di Vernon, and Ernest's ability to fool Vernon with some of the slights found in these very pages. Then we're on to part one, tight tricks and a loose slight. The first trick being Claptrap, which sets the tone and publishing layout for the entire book. It's a perfect example on how the book is easily read thanks to Stephen Minch's elucidating writing style. Precision illustrations by Kelly Lyles enforces Stephen's instructions. The well-drawn visual guides are linked to annotations in the text. Perfect examples can be seen here as illustrations numbered 6, 7 and 8 are linked to the text here here and here. It's a combination that makes learning something new easy to digest. A fantastic trick called Jack Synapses has the four aces placed onto the table and the jacks placed at four random intervals throughout the deck. With a magical gesture, the aces and jacks change places. This is competition level stuff. Moving on to individual sleight of hand, one move tool is the longitudinal swivel steel, a move that will have many applications once mastered. Kato Ninetales is an instant production of a chosen card that appears face up on the deck that has previously been reversed in the center. A real wow moment. Then we have Thought Manifest. Imagine a card that is merely thought of and is instantly produced at the fingertips. I have been doing something similar myself for a number of years and this is a very nice alternate handling. Part 2 is dedicated to all tricks and sundry that encompass riffle shuffle techniques and associated slides. Cross Purposes uses a riffle shuffle to produce a very unique rising card effect with a chosen card appearing at a very impossible right angle. A special mention must go to Lustig for Life a countdown effect that can be a killer piece in anybody's repertoire. Browsing through the book, you will find your own personal effects that will astound you. This material is only published in this book and cannot be found elsewhere. Ernest did an amazing job with crediting all the resources known for the influence in his work. Stephen Minch made sure that all the crediting was up to date circa 1993. You can see the credits at the bottom of each relevant page. The book concludes with an index of slights, two pages that give you a great way to have easy access to learn the slights necessary to perform all the material exactly as described in the book. Before I give you my final thoughts, let's go to my hot tips. Number 1. Apologia. It's basically the book's introduction and holds Ernest Eric's thoughts and feelings in regards to his passion for sleight of hand, his lack of interest in presentational work, hence the title, his adulation for Stephen Mensch, his thankfulness to his inspirations and magical friendships, but most of all, the story of his first trip to the Magic Castle and meeting Di Vernon. Within this preface you will discover that your love of sleight of hand is about to be rewarded for your study of the pages that follow. Reading Apologia time and time again will make you appreciate the work. Number two, start at the back. 
you will find that starting at the end of the book and accessing the index of slights will help your progression enormously. Learn the slights first and you'll have the necessary tools to work through the effects more proficiently. This is what Ernest would call the nuts and bolts of our craft. Number three, it's all in the credits. Ernest's crediting was as important to him as the tricks themselves. His study of magic was undeniable. And thanks to Stephen Minch for filling in the crediting blanks. With these credits, you can now break the boundaries of this book and go and see how Ernest found the tools necessary to create his own work. All the books mentioned in these credits are definitely worth having in your personal library. Okay, so you're not going to take this book, gloss it over and pick something up. There are no self-workers here. What you'll find is a book that you can pick up and study, really study. If you learn just one piece of sleight of hand or trick from the book, you'll be performing something that probably 90% of magicians will never be able to do or willing to learn. What I'm holding in my hands is a real treasure trove of ideas, slights and magical effects. If you want to hide a secret, publish it. And by forces unseen, certainly falls into the category of one of the biggest secrets in magic. One of the greatest collections of card magic ever published. This is Gary Scott closing the book on By Forces Unseen. <laughs>